So I'm just going to give a brief kind of overview of some error stuff. So there's package errors, and then there's uh, Godoc forward slash built-in. I love this package name. Package built-in provides documentation for Go's pre-declared identifiers. The items documented here are not actually in package built-in, but their descriptions here allow Godoc to present documentation for the language special identifiers. And so uh, I'm going to just see where that takes us. <laughs> just takes you to package built-in again. Um, but here you have type error. And so type error is an inter interface. And any type that has this method associated with it, so any value that is of a type that has that method associated with it is also of type error. That's interesting. And uh, up until Go 1.13, and so 1.13 is the most current release, here all we had was new error. And now at 1.13 we have as, and we have is, and we have unwrap, which is interesting. And so what this allows us to do is is allows us to, this is how you used to do it, and uh, is allows us to compare if the error we got is some other error. So like if you look at package, you know, uh, godoc.org forward slash os, and you look at like files, right? And when you create a file, you get a pointer to file, or you open a file, you get a pointer to a file. But right here at the beginning, you have constants and variables. And the variables might be error permission de denied, right? So it might be error permission, or error exists, file already exists, or error not exists, file doesn't exist, or error closed. And so with package errors, right, what you might do, because with your errors, you want to get as, and this is all for your benefit, you want to get as specific as possible with your errors. So other programming languages uh, were kind of like, they weren't, um, they weren't as adamant on checking errors. And so what that means, what that meant was that programmers could kind of like be lackadaisical about errors. Like, let's just write the program and we'll do a few things. And some, some languages have this entire, um, you know, uh, what is it I'm thinking about like in Java when you catch and recover? What's it called? Try catch, you know, and those things. But uh, Go is very much like anywhere an error can occur, deal with it. And so it's very adamant about checking errors. So you not only want to create code that runs, but you want to create code that continues running. <laughs> and so writing errors makes you think through, you know, in an additional way, is this robust code? And then it also helps you handle it if it stops running. And when it stops running, you want to program in what should happen. And then you also want to get as much information out of that. Who, what, where, when, why, and how did this stop running? So it's not at all ambiguous. And so very clearly, and so the more precise you could get about providing information about where the error occurred and what happened, the better. And so this syntax, if error equals OS error exists, which is right here, OS error exists, right? Then we're going to do something. But instead of doing it, and this is the old way, instead of doing it that way, we do errors is. And so you have this new errors is. And then another way that it would be done would be to do some assertion. Like here's my error, and I'm going to assert that it's a path error. So in package OS, we have in the index, we have path error. There we go. And so path error has all of this other functionality. First of all, path error is a struct, and it has op, path, and error. So, you know, uh, path error records an error and the operation and the file path that caused it. Path error is an error because it has this method associated with it, error string, and any type that has that method associated is type error. And then there's also timeout and unwrap on there. And so if you can assert that the error you got is a path error, you then have access to all of this other information. 
And, uh, and so in the past, you say, hey, is this a path there? And if so, path there, OK. And if this is OK, then let's print out the path where this thing occurred. And so that's, uh, that's a pointer. you know. But now, instead of doing it this way, you just do errors as. And you put in your error, and then you point in, put in a pointer to your path there. That's uh, going to be an address, but then you still pass in the address of that, because if you look at errors as, errors as says the value pointed to by target, right? The value pointed to by target. That confuses me a little bit, why you can't just point it, pass in the pointer. It's already a pointer. But they're here in the standard library passing in a pointer to a pointer. Here's the address of the address. So I guess they need to change, I don't know, access that address. It just depends upon how it was implemented. And, uh, and then you can put out that path. So you got is, you got as, and then you also have unwrap. And so that's interesting to look at. That gives you a little bit of a start if you wanted to like think about what you know about handling errors already. And the last piece I'm going to add to that is in Godoc, in the thumped package, they have uh, error f. And so error f, uh, you use this and you could pass in, you do a format string, you pass in percent %w, Right, whatever the error was in the previous call, and uh, and then that's going to allow you to uh, kind of dig down into the levels through a stack call to the various errors that have been passed through the stack call of function calls that foo called bar called moo called cat, and in each level you're you know percent w funct error f, and then you could use is and as to kind of like look through that. Uh, and you could also use that other function in there to unwrap it one at a time. That's kind of interesting. And so, uh, yeah, so I'll just like see if I can't, my buddy busted out an example, which was like, I was like, dude, that was such an awesome example. I'm gonna see if I could recreate it. 053 air and uh, create a file main.go and so package main and func main and we want to kind of see uh, some functions run and um, the functions that we want to call is are um, like we'll do the we'll do the foo calls calls bar and then uh, bar calls moo and then uh, moo calls cat, and then um, cat calls uh, nothing. Um, and so foo is going to be the first one, and cat's going to be the last one. And so um, func cat, um, and we're going to return, let me just see if I could remember how to do this, return an error. So we're going to return thump.air f and then percent %w, the, the air at cat, and uh, we'll pass in the air. And this will take in an e air. So we'll pass in the air the and save it. And so that was a uh, cat. Uh, calls nothing, and then moo calls cat, so we have func moo e, and then I'm just going to copy this. I'm kind of like uh, not sure if I'm building this in the right direction, but we'll see how it turns out. And we're going to return uh, cat, moo calls cat, and passes in an error. I can't remember the example. I'll go look it up and uh, do it in the next video.